So some of you might remember that commercial from last year. I tried to create a commercial of my own to introduce not only Inventor but also the awesomeness of this class. And I used Spongebob to depict it. I got the snails to move across a track and unfortunately I could never get Spongebob to work correctly. As you can see his skeleton is all messed up and he will never follow the snails. Although I kind of did at one point but today's not that day. Welcome! This is Autodesk Inventor Puzzle Cube Project Tutorial Video Number 1. I'm Mr. Z and we are going to make puzzle cubes in Autodesk Inventor. So the first thing you're going to want to do is find this software on your desktop. Autodesk Inventor Professional 2015. Now there are quite a few Autodesks on some of the computers so be sure to click on the one with this name on it and not one of the other ones. If you do you're going to have a different interface and you're not going to be able to follow along with me. Okay so once you've opened it up you're going to have an interface but most likely it's not going to look like mine. But that's fine. The one thing that we are definitely going to have in common is that we have this iPro up here. So if you click on I and go to New, click on that, you're going to get an op, uh, a series of options to what you want to do in Autodesk Inventor. And in our case we want to create a brand new object, something that didn't exist before. So in order to do that we're going to create a part and we're going to click on standard.ipt, this file. We're going to double click on it and it's going to open up an interface such as this. Now your screen should kind of look like mine. If it doesn't, then I think you'll be okay until I get back, uh, but hopefully it does and we can move forward. So, first things first, this is where we do our work in, this is where we make our parts, it's called the workspace. This is where it has all our parts listed as well as all the actions it takes to make those parts. This is called the browser. It is one of the most important things in Inventor. And last but not least, this over here is called the view cube. It is a cube that if you click on the corners it can actually show you different perspectives of your object or different views of your object. For the start of this class, this cube does not exist. I do not want anybody in this class to click on this cube until I say click on this cube. And the reason why is because if you rely on this cube for seeing your different perspectives, like if you try to grab it and turn it in weird ways, it is actually going to hurt you a lot more than it helps you. And I've seen a lot of good or okay engineers <laughs> kind of mess themselves up because they rely on this too much. It's a part of almost every 3D CAD modeling program and it slows you down and I want you to go at max speed and to get used to the tools in a comfortable way. And you'll see what I mean by that in a second. So let's go ahead and start. First thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to create a 2D sketch. So over here under the 3D model tab there's a start 2D sketch option. Click on the top of that and if you do that it should open up an axis such as this. Now for this project we're just making cubes so it doesn't matter which plane we select. I'm going to select the XY plane and it's going to turn my screen as such. Now if your view cube doesn't say front it doesn't matter for this project all we are doing is making a cube. And the base shape for a cube is a square. So here we have some sketching tools. We can draw lines, circles, arcs, and rectangles. And with these tools, with just these tools, we can make almost anything we want in Autodesk Inventor. So if we're going to make a cube, we're going to either make it with lines or we're going to make it with a rectangle. And since this is a rectangle, I'm going to click on it and it's a two point rectangle which means if I click somewhere on the screen left click it and I left click somewhere else on the screen it's going to go ahead and create a rectangle or a square. Now 
you're going to see some weird things on your screen. These are just constraints and this is a brand new feature of Autodesk 2015. So for the, for the moment, ignore them. They're not going to play a significant role in this project. Later on, that's a different story. So we have a cube here, but I'm quite sure it's not symmetrical in every way. So we're going to dimension this cube. So since I still have the rectangle tool selected, as you can see on my cursor, I got to be very careful that I don't click somewhere else and create another cube. If you do, uh, you can delete it. But in order to get rid of the cursor, first of all, hit escape two times on your keyboard. The reason I say two times is because some commands here take two. And if you just do it two times for everything, then it doesn't matter what you click on. And I'm going to select this by just clicking, selecting it, and I'm going to delete this off the screen. Now I'm going to dimension this cube by selecting the dimension option over here. And we're going to dimension it as such. If I click on this line and I move up, you're going to notice that I just created a dimension and an extension line. And I'm going to click down somewhere. And right now it's 0.957. Yours might be different, yours might be much larger or a much smaller number, but let's have our cubes all be one inch. So I'm going to change that number to one, and I'm going to click OK. Now this side is equal to one inch. I'm going to dimension this other side, and instead of clicking on the line, which you can do, and it's perfectly fine, you can dimension in many other ways. So, for instance, I could click on this corner, and I could go down to this corner and click on that, and I could dimension in just the same way I did when I clicked on the line. So I'm going to click it down and I'm going to change that dimension to one inch as well. And then I'm going to click the green check mark or hit enter on my keyboard. So now we have a symmetrical square. Awesome. We still have the dimension tool selected so just hit escape two times and it will deselect itself. So just remember that, if you ever have a tool selected, click escape two times and you'll be fine. Okay, but that's all we wanted to do for this 2D sketch of ours. So we have to click this finish sketch button. And we do, when we do that, it's going to take us to an isometric view of the shape. Now, we are going to make a 3D solid out of this 2D shape. And to do that, we have to go over to the Extrude option over here. I'm going to click on it. And you're going to notice that right away, Inventor's trying to help us out. It's like, hey, I think you want to make a, an extrusion of that shape. Why? Because we just created that shape, so it wants to create a 3D solid for it, in a sense. So it created this shape. If I look at my options over here, this extrusion is one inch. If I wanted it to be a longer extrusion, I could change the option to let's say two inches and it would make the cube bigger. But now it's a two by one by one, which doesn't really fit a purpose for us. So I could change it back to one inch. And alternatively, and le less accurately, you could actually also grab this arrow and move it to how you want. And if you notice on the screen over here, it actually adjusts based on where you put it. So I'm going to set this back to one inch. I'm going to click OK and boom, I have a cube here. Now, I want to look around this cube and see all the awesome features of it, but I do not want to use this view cube to do it. Using the view cube is going to harm you in the, more than it helps you. So, how to move around an inventor. If you press in the middle zoom in, zoom out wheel on your mouse, if you press it in and hold it in, you can actually move the screen left and right. So like I'm doing right now, all I'm doing is pressing in the zoom, uh, the zoom in, zoom out thing, the middle scrolly wheel on a mouse. Now I'll move it left and right. If I roll it up and down, it will zoom me in and out of a shape. Also useful. If I'm pointing at something, it will zoom me into wherever I'm pointing at. And last but not least, if you hold down shift on the keyboard and press in the middle scroll wheel, 
on the mouse. You can spin the part around. And this is the most useful thing in terms of orienting your shape. Notice the view cube on the side here is spinning along with me and I have full 360 degree control in every single direction. And I could like do it like really cool spins and everything uh, if you had free time because it's awesome to do stuff like that. But if I was using this wheel over here, you're going to notice that I cannot move as well. It's kind of clunky. I can't move as freely. It's harming me. I don't like that. So mess around with the zoom in, zoom out, side swipes and spins until you feel comfortable with it. Now, we have a cube here. The next thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to color this cube a, a color to match one of the objects on our puzzle cube. So you have five different parts in your puzzle cube, so you're going to have five different colored cubes. So in order to change the color of a cube, head over to your Tools tab, locate it over here, select that, and then here are your Appearance options. For now, we are just going to be working with the option that's called Adjust. We're going to click on it once. It's going to open up this color wheel over here. And then what I want you to do is click on one side. So you'll notice there's an eyedropper. If you click on one side, it's going to pretty much control that side now. And you can now change it to whatever color you want by moving around on the wheel. So I'm going to change it. My first cube is going to be a cool reddish color. So a red color like this. Now, without doing anything, what I want you to do is I want you to hold down shift on your mouse and I want you to spin. And while you're spinning, I want you to click on the other sides. But you have to keep holding down on shift. So we're painting all the sides of the cube at once. But if you accidentally click somewhere else, oh, I guess it does work. It must be a new feature. Uh, in the past, it would undo it. Okay. Wow, that's better. I guess they fixed that. Okay, never mind about that then. But paint all the sides, and once you've painted all the sides, go ahead and click the check mark. And it's going to color your cube red. Next, what I want you to do is go on your desktop or in your number, and I want you to create a folder and call it Puzzle Cube Project. And in that folder, what I want you to do next is I want you to go to iPro, save as, and save it into your folder. So I'm going to create a new folder here. Call it Puzzle Cube Fold. Whoops. Puzzle Cube Project or Puzzle Cube Folder. And I'm going to save this as Red Cube. And I'm going to hit Save. So now this part has been saved as Red Cube. I'm going to go back to Tools. I'm going to go to Adjust again. I'm going to click on one of my sides. And I'm going to now change the color to, let's say, Blue. I'm going to hold down Shift. And I'm going to click on all the sides. And I'm going to revolve it by using the middle scroll wheel and holding down shift. I'm going to hit OK. And now I have a blue cube. I'm going to go to iPro, save as, and I'm going to save it in the folder. Whoops, I saved it outside the folder. That was not smart of me. And I'm going to change the name to blue cube. Uh, repeat this for the other three colored cubes you have to make. And then meet me in the second part of this tutorial video so I can talk about putting these